it was one of those type of games where you either loved it or you hated it. And if you ask me, it didn't even really start getting bad till Final Fantasy X. But this one was where it all started going wrong. It seems like they wanted to change everything from the last Final Fantasy game. The characters, the look, the feel, the sound, even the focus. They decided to change the plot completely into one based more around a central love story than any kind of plot that centers around saving the world. I mean, see if you can even spot what's going on here from the subtitles. These really weird cryptic subtitles that appear all over these Japanese games, and I can't imagine they make much more sense in Japanese than they do in English. But I always like the air quotes, and I'll be, uh, waiting here. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. But if there's one thing Square does well, it's making really awesome trailers that overhype the shit out of the game for fanboys, who will buy anything Square puts out and consider it a masterpiece. I even met one Jagoff at a convention who thought Air Gaze and The Bouncer were really good games. Anyway, there's no real point in trying to piece together what the fuck is going on with the plot, because this video makes absolutely no sense. As far as you can tell, there's some queen chick with huge boobs, who has real trouble getting through doors because of the big thing mounted on her back, and these two are trying to work out their unresolved homosexual issues by sissy fighting with two of the stupidest weapons in history. <laughs> there can be only one! <laughs> ha! Pulled my finger! <laughs> Now you might think there's something epic going on here, like there's some kind of world-shattering event that warrants this duel because of all the Carmina Barana music with the god chorus and the <laughs> But no, these guys are really just sissy fighting in training. I'm serious. They're just sparring. And from here he moves on to play a card battle game. <laughs> Face palm, baby. Ooh. Owned. <laughs> I'm gonna harm you. For those of you who can't speak Latin, the uh, the chorus is saying, Real gay, real gay, sissy gay, 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 sissy gay, gay, but sex, astro glide, glory hole, balls, tea bag, chong. Okay, I'm done. I'm not gonna harp on the gay thing. I was just fucking around. I mean, really, they're more emo than gay anyway. And sissies, leather wearing sissies too. <laughs> my forehead hurts. And now you gotta name him, so, uh, let's see. Hmm, I wonder if sawed off Winona looking too much leather wearing whiny mumbling girl hating emo shit bird will fit. Uh, 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 well, let's see, only seven letters? I love it when they let you name the characters, because it lets you pick something appropriate. I mean, for Squall, where we figure we got the stupid hair in his eyes, the mumbling, the ellipses all the time. I know, let's just uh, go with Emo Git. You know, there's so much about this game that annoys me. It's really hard to know where to start, but I, I just take them as they come. But I just love how the, uh, the first scene of this, uh, game is our brave hero getting himself stitched up in the school nurse's office. There's just something amusing about that. He's like, oh, it's gonna leave a scar. And not only that, he's such a wuss, he has to be picked up by his teacher. Oh my god, this is so embarrassing. You wanna call your mommy? Hey, wait a minute. Now, hold on a second. Now, who is that? Is that my teacher? Dear God, that's the hottest teacher I've ever SEEN! I mean, I know she's a cartoon and all, but God damn, I am so thinking foursome right now. She's a teacher with a whip! Oh! Teacher, I need to stay late for a cram session. Mm, look at her, she's having an orgasm just looking at me. Oh, spank me now. Oh! Oh, oh, I would so hit it! Froggy style! Ooh. She's a teacher so hot and sexy, she's actually got groupies called trapies. Count me in, honey. I gotta stay after school. Come on, you're my new girlfriend now, baby. Kiss me. Mmm, that hair smells good. I'm back into this right here, right now. I don't care who's watching. I'll be in my bunk. Emo Git, you're forgetting something. Your girlfriend? Uh-uh, baby. You're my girlfriend. <laughs> anyway, you gotta name your GF, which is kind of like your Espers. Uh, I don't like the name they give me, and so they give you a lot bigger one. This kind of looks like an ass pickle to me, so I'm gonna name it that, and uh, I don't know. Shiva won't do. I, I guess Miss Bukaki will do. 
And you know, this is where I really started taking issue with the game, because after you do this, Quistus starts like uh, giving you tutorials on every single thing in the game, and it's so involved. They changed everything from the ground up, and they made it made it so needlessly abstract and complicated that this is just the beginning of it. You have to link your magic to your given attributes, and the different kinds of magic you link to your different attributes increase them in different ways. But not only that, you can link your magic to everything else. Not just your attributes, but your various items, your attack, your defense, your luck, everything. But not only that, it matters what quantity of each magic you have. You're not given magic. You have to draw it. And I'll have a lot more on that later. But you, you can stock up to 100 magic types, and you have to find them to your attributes. So basically you want to full load every time of every magic spell conceivable. And if you want magic, you have to draw it from your enemies, which is a combat action. And to do that, you do nothing but draw, basically meaning, if you want magic, you have to do this for every spell, for every enemy you meet, and to do that, you have to do nothing but let the enemy mercilessly wail on you while you draw hundreds upon hundreds of magic spells, just so you can be competitive in combat and cast the magic you want to cast! You will spend so many untold hours doing nothing but drawing magic and getting yourself abused that'll drive you batshit insane! I just wanna fight! And let's not forget the tutorials on the gunblade. The fucking gunblade. I sound like such a fucking retard when I have to bitch about the gunblade. And you know why? It's because it's idiots who like Final Fantasy VIII and idiots who defend this thing. I mean, do I even really need to explain to you in how many ways the gunblade is stupid? You can't tell? I get the concept. I really do. I mean, really big swords are cool. Guns are cool. But when you mix them both together, you're not always going to get Reese's peanut butter cups. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what the fuck is it? It's a four-foot sword duct tape onto a fucking pistol grip. What the hell does it do? If you swing something this heavy with such an inappropriate grip, all you got to do is break your fucking wrist. I mean, does it have ammo? Do you need to reload it? What does the ammo do? What actually happens when you pull the trigger? Does a sword hurt more when you load it with bullets? I just don't get it. Uh, and, and, and here it comes. The cries of the fanboys. Oh, you're bringing up realism in a Final Fantasy game. Well, yeah, I am in this case. I mean, not only does the gunblade look stupid, but Final Fantasy VIII marked a transitional point in the series. I mean, you could argue that I liked Final Fantasy VII, and the hero there had a six-foot buster sword that was bigger than him and probably weighed upward of 200 pounds. Did I have a problem with that? Well, yeah, sort of. I mean, but with Final Fantasy VIII, the games changed to a more realistic look. They actually looked like people and not super deformed anime characters. Was it really so out of line to expect them to have more realistic weapons? I mean, everyone else does. And is this the chosen weapon of an entire class of soldiers? I mean, somebody really just miscalculated the coolness factor of the gunblade. I mean, I could combine random shit too and come up with better stuff than that. I mean, like, uh, the shark zooka. All the gunblade does is add a timing puzzle to the fucking game, and I hate timing puzzles! I mean, it's the future! You're a soldier, get a gun! Why do you need a sword? Anyway, you go to the fire cave as your final exam, and so you have to choose a time limit. I choose ten minutes, because I'm fucking hardcore, and that's how I roll! And if it doesn't seem annoying yet, it will, because one of the fastest ways to beat the bad guys is to summon your GFs, or your Guardian Forces. And this is kinda cool until you realize you can never skip these animations. And they only get longer from here. This is the shortest one. You are gonna get so sick of seeing these during the course of the game, and you'll summon them five, six, ten times a game. Oh yeah, I'm serious. It just gets so annoying and repetitive. So I finally just get sick of it, and I decide the much better option is to try to whack it to death with my sword. And I haven't even bothered drawing magic, so this is taking way longer than it should. Luckily, my girlfriend is there with her whip and beats the shit out of this guy. I just like how this is the standard final exam for the special class of soldiers. They put you in a fiery magma cave where they make you, make you fight a summoned demon. I mean, it, it, there's a written exam and the demon war. Oh, this is great. Truly, this is the future! Oh, I know it seems like I'm nitpicking, but I ain't even gotten started yet on the most annoying parts of Final Fantasy VIII. The characters, the story, 
and the one thing that has plagued every RPG ever made since this game, the fucking cards!